wonder who's at the door. Yoo-hoo, Mr. Sambo. Oh, why, it's Big Barbie, the living doll. <laughs> Mr. Zando, would you like to see my cute little ass? Oh, boy, you bet I would. Then take a look at this. Do you like scary movies? Well, do you? Because strange images are in the air tonight. I've sent Quasi deep into the vault to pull out some of the scariest movies ever made. So turn out the lights, get close to someone you care for, because it's time for Zombo's House of Horror Movies. <laughs> Come, let's go inside and meet Quasi. Miss Transylvania. <laughs> Werewolfy. The head nurse. Officer not so friendly. And Bianca, the rack girl. And I'm hot. Hello, everybody, boys and ghouls, mummies and daddies. It's your old pal Zombo welcoming you to Zombo's House of Horror Movies. Ooh, this week's movie is one of the scariest movies ever made. Man Beast. Man Beast was released in 1956. Connie Hayward's brother disappears on an expedition to the Himalayas to look for the abominable snowman. So, Sister Connie decides to form her own expedition to find her missing brother, and you'll never guess who they run into. Man Beast stars Bud Abbott, Frankie Avalon, Rosie O'Donnell, Humphrey Bogart, Yasser Arafat, Sigmund Freud, Don King, Bing Crosby, Chewbacca, Al Gore, and David Bowie. Where's this ne'er-do-well? I wonder who's at the door. All right, you. Didn't you see that stop sign at the corner? Oh, yes, I did. Then why didn't you stop? Oh, well, because I don't believe everything I read. Oh, is that so? Well, you better believe this ticket. Hey, wait a second. Aren't you, uh, uh, you are. Why, you're famous! I'm famous? Yeah, every policeman knows you! Oh, excuse me, but can I borrow that uniform for a Halloween party? But why, you, I, uh, <laughs> you, I, you know, I, And we'll be right back to our very scary movie right after these important messages from our sponsors! <laughs> Ooh, tonight's movie is brought to you in non-living color, otherwise known as scary black and white. <laughs> the mysterious Himalayas, spanning the entire distance between India and Tibet. Somewhere up in this vast, desolate section of our world live a strange species whose existence has baffled science for centuries. Snow cones, get your red hot snow cones. Snow cones. In recent years, many anthropologists have pondered the new reports of these creatures. The question is always the same. Are they man or beast?
Ashcroft Film Company, I guess that means no nudity. No one here. Oh, I just hope I can find a bed. I'd rather find Erickson. I didn't see his outfit. I hope we're not late. If he's left, we'll have to follow him. Well, that's easily said, Connie. We've come this far. We'll keep going. Speak English. Lugger. We're looking for Dr. Erickson. Is he here? Gone. When? Tomorrow. You mean yesterday? Do you know where? Mountain. Hello. What are you doing up here? I'm just too tired to go into it. I'm Trevor Hudson. This is Connie Hayward. Steve Cameron. Hayward? I met a man named Hayward. Dr. James Hayward here a few weeks back. My brother. And the reason we're here. Oh, he left ten days ago to set up camp for the Erickson expedition. And Professor Erickson? Erickson left yesterday morning. Then we'll have to follow him. You mean you don't know the purpose of Dr. Erickson's expedition? Only that he's been preparing it for years. Well, his purpose is to capture one of the abominable snowmen. That's what the natives call the Yeti. A kind of people covered with hair, supposedly living above the 21,000-foot level. Covered with hair? What do you mean, a kind of people? Nobody seems to know whether they're man or beast. Everyone thought they were a fable until some famous explorers found traces of them just before World War I. Since then, many people have claimed to have seen them. Did you know about this? Well, I knew Dr. Erickson was hunting snowmen, but I thought they were fossil relics of the Ice Age. Do you believe these stories? Well, Erickson's a famous anthropologist. Are these Yeti dangerous? I've seen four expeditions go up in search of the Yeti. And each has lost at least one man. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go! Well, that settles it, Connie. I'm not letting you endanger your life by going any farther. You can't go beyond this point anyway. You won't be able to get guides. You'll never make it alone. Why can't we get guides? They won't go out on anything connected with the Yeti hunt. Unless a certain guide named Varga leads them. And Erickson's got him. Mr. Cameron, do you know where Erickson's camp will be? I have a rough idea. Would you lead us up? You know what you're asking? Mr. Cameron, I'm willing to pay any price for your assistance. It's urgent that I get to my brother. We can get lost up there and they'd never find us. I'll have to risk that. You're a very determined person, Miss Hayward. Yes, Mr. Cameron. Determined to save my brother's life. We'd have to leave right away if we expect to catch Erickson before he reaches deep snow. You'll go. I know you two would never make it alone. Thank you, Mr. Cameron. I'm very grateful.
We can make another couple of miles before nightfall. Let's camp here and push ourselves tomorrow. We'll never catch up with Erickson sitting here. I can't go another step. We stay with party. She says stay, we stay. We'll go on. Connie, this is stupid. You're killing yourself. We'll keep going. We're lucky we may see them tomorrow. You've been saying that for two days. I wasn't saying it to hear myself talk. I don't enjoy this pushing any more than you do. But it's our only hope to overtake Erickson. Don't blame Steve, Hud. I'm the one who's doing the pushing. We'll stay with our schedule, daylight to dusk. You might as well take it gracefully. If this isn't the weirdest nonsense. Somebody thinks he saw a Yeti 40 years ago. This gives Erickson the idea to capture one. And I find myself stuck up in the wilds of the Himalayas just because your brother Hud. happened Hud! To... I'm sorry. But you've got to admit it doesn't make much sense. What do you want us to do, turn back? Look, Hud, I didn't ask you to come on this trip. You volunteered. If you want to turn back, go ahead. You may be getting a touch of the altitude. It affects some people. He has a touch of feeling sorry for himself. I guess you never really know people unless you go through something like this with them. He'll come around. You better get some rest. Tired as I've been, I can't sleep. <laughs> Guilty conscience? It's my brother, Jim. Ever since you mentioned these snowmen, I've been all the more worried. What's your theory about them? I don't have any. All I know is what I've read and heard from the natives. Has anyone ever had a good look at them? I talked to a man once who was supposed to have seen one through his glasses. He claimed they walked upright like a man. How can anyone live in that cold? I can't answer that. Nothing grows up there. It's too high for animal life. Your guess is as good as anybody's. Dr. Erickson really thinks he'll contact one? He certainly hopes to. I had a long talk with him one night. Do you really think we'll catch up with him tomorrow? Oh, I figured we picked up a day on them. Hello, everybody. It's your old pal Zombo. It's time to go visit the Rat Girl. <laughs> we'll be right back to our very scary movie after these important messages from our sponsors. Ah! Ah! 
Hello, everybody. It's your old pal Zombo down here in Zombo's Dungeon Art Gallery. Do you know where some of the world's greatest artists get their inspiration? It's from this show. Are you a budding artist? Do you look like Toulouse Lautrec? Or do you have a strange affinity for body parts like Vincent Van Gogh or Mike Tyson? Maybe you have artistic ability. Can you draw Quasi the Hunchback? Well, here's your chance to show your art to the world. It's time for Zombo Scary Picture Gallery. Let's look at tonight's picture of the week. Today's picture was sent in by Satch Squash from the Lower East Side. Werewolfie? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you, Werewolfie. Let's go in for a closer look at this very interesting and scary picture. Oh, I see the two Yetis, and it looks like they're on vacation. I see the snow cone. I see the snowshoes. Oh, those aren't snowshoes. Those are sneakers. And I see the cold ones in there. And oh, look, he's smiling. Maybe he thinks he's going to get a snow job. Do you know what the difference is between the abominable snowman and the abominable snow woman? Snowballs! Now don't forget, boys and ghouls, get out your pencils, paints, crayons, and whatever. Draw me a scary picture and send it to me, Zombo, at the Scary Picture Gallery, and I'll put it on the show for everyone to see. Send in your scary pictures to Zombo's Scary Picture Gallery in care of this station. Or check out the Zombo website at Zombo.com under Gallery. <laughs> Take another look. What good will it do? Even if you see them, we can't hail them to stop. We better find them soon. We've made this trip up here for nothing. Why? Because all this snow is moving six different directions. How could I have got mixed up in this thing? Because you wanted to help me. Or well, so you said. <sighs> this high. They're trying to find us with glasses. Look. They're trying to signal us. There's a woman. Now, who can they be? They certainly want us. We'll wait for them. Are they thought? They're waiting. Thank God. Come on. Let's move. Cameron, what are you doing up here? Miss Hayward? How do you How do? do you do, Doctor? And Mr. Hudson, Doctor. How do you do? A pleasure, Doctor. Miss Hayward will do all the explaining. Hayward? Are you related to Jim? My brother. You've come way up here to see him? 
I have to. But I didn't quite plan it like this. We expected to find you in Carpo. We missed you there, missed you at the outpost, and here we are. Well, we'll both see him soon. We're not very far from camp. Lucky we heard that shot. We'll be in the snow in a few hours. You never could have caught us. Hey, on. Make coffee. We might as well camp right here. Here, let me help you with your things. Thank you. So when I heard that new tracks had been sighted, and there were fresh rumors about the Yeti, I decided to see for myself. You really believe it? It's hard not to when so many Famous men stake their reputations on the fact. Are they really covered with fur? <clears throat> Not fur. Hair. Fur has no root, but hair does. We've definitely established that the Yeti are covered with a hair quite similar to our own. Does that mean they're bald? Here's the general conception of most scientists. It's more beast than man. Maybe to your eyes, but I believe it's human. You really want to capture that? I think that I'd die happy if I could study them. They may be the missing link. If they are, we've solved a thousand mysteries about you and me. I'd hate to tangle with one on a dark night. Oh, I don't think you have to worry about that. I wish I hadn't seen that sketch. I don't think I'll ever sleep oh, again. Oh, nonsense. They're probably just simple people. People? Just hope I don't dream tonight. <laughs> well, I guess we'd all better turn in. Yeah. Uh. Strict leash laws in the Himalayas. Stop here. Tomorrow, big climb. There it is. Yeti country. As far as I'm concerned, you can have it. If we're lucky and capture one, this trip could make you famous. You can have the fame. I'll take some hot coffee. <coughs> Magnificent country. It seems to fascinate you as much as it does me. I'm not going up there. I didn't think I'd make that last hill. It was easy for you. A night's rest and... No. It's not the climbing yet. It's a Yeti. I have a feeling. Come, Come on, Hudson. We need a drink. Steve, there's something wrong. I felt it all day. Nonsense, Connie. I can understand HUD cracking, but... He's watching us right now. <coughs> Did you see that? He knows we're talking about him. I'll speak to Erickson when I get a chance. Have you seen much of him before? It's one of the guys that works for Varga. And what about this Varga? Can he be trusted? Everyone hires him. And something always happens. Someone always gets killed. I'll see what I can find out. Not a word of this to the others. I'll keep my eye on the guy tomorrow as we go up. 
You know, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Hey, Zambo! Oh, well, if it isn't my little pal, Minnie Z. Why did Miss Transylvania go on a diet? I don't know. She was losing her ghoulish figure. <laughs> don't. Do you like slapstick humor? And we'll be right back to our very scary movie right after these important messages from our sponsors. <laughs> Hello, everybody. It's your old pal Zombo reminding you to check us out on Instagram. We're posting new material every week with Miss Transylvania, the Rat Girl, Scary Picture Gallery, Officer Not So Friendly, and me, Zombo. You can also follow Zombo's House of Horror Movies on Facebook, YouTube, and Zombo.com. And you can stream our show on the Monster Channel and Other Worlds TV on Roku. So be there and be scared. <laughs> this country, the more I'm convinced the Yeti are a myth. Look, what could live in a place like that? Canadians! That's part of the mystery. What about you? Ever see a Yeti? No, see. Ever meet anybody who did? See Yeti. Die. Let's move out. supposed to set up tents. Let's have a look. Bad ice! Bad ice! Get down! Bad ice! Get down!
Nothing. This didn't happen today. How do you figure it, Doc? I'm baffled. Everything's ripped apart. It'll be getting dark pretty soon. We're going to be stuck. We may as well be stuck comfortably. Better give me a hand setting up camp. <laughs> Good shape. The guides took off during the night. Left us up here. What? They deserted. Now we're isolated up here with no one to lead us back. Where's Steve? Oh, he and Erickson went out this morning to see if they could find any sign of Jim and Varga. This whole trip was a blunder. If you felt that way, why did you come with me? Because I thought I could talk some sense into you. Oh, look, Hud. This trip has proved we'll never get along. It's been one continual argument ever since we left home. Oh, wait a minute. I have to make a pit stop. see a mark, track, something. How do you figure it, Doc? I've been afraid to mention it. You believe the Eddie got Jim and Varga? Is there any other explanation? I just can't believe it. We'd better get back. What do we tell Connie? They went home. They were abducted by a UFO. They got a part in a better movie. Just keep the Yeti out of it. No use worrying her. Doctor Erickson, it's good to see you. you. Mr. Cameron, we meet again. I'm glad you two appeared. Miss Hayward and Mr. Hudson have been quite concerned. Do you know where Jim is? He doesn't. He's as puzzled as we are. Weren't you taken... Didn't you leave the camp together? He left alone. There had been quite a snowfall that night. And I thought I might find some fresh tracks. When I returned that afternoon, I found the camp as you had. I've been looking ever since. He must have left tracks in the heavy snow. I tracked him around to the lee side of the West Bluff. But beyond that point, the wind had obliterated everything. Mr. Varga hasn't given up hope. He says there's a good chance Jim might have holed up somewhere. He was anxious to leave. Too anxious, I thought. Maybe he stumbled onto something and just kept going. Knowing we'd look for him. As we surely will. May I have a word with you alone, Varga? If Miss Hayward will excuse me? Of course. We'll make a thorough search for him in the morning. God willing, we'll find him. Did you find anything, Steve? Nothing. Do you think there's any hope? Connie, I don't know. Well, I'm not going to give up. If Jim's out there, I'm going to find him. Dead or alive. Come in. Come in, Varda. Can I offer you a drink? Never touch a drop. He wasn't offering you a drop. He was offering you the whole bottle. You can't mix mountains and whiskey. What about Jim, Varga? I wish I knew. Any ideas? You're referring, of course, to the Yeti. How else can you explain his complete disappearance? As I've told you down below, I think I've made this trip up here more times than any man alive. I've yet to see Yeti or Trax. Then how do you explain these rumors? I don't even try. Every new rumor means more expeditions will make the trip up here. Expeditions are my business. As you know, I've specialized in the evolution of man for over 30 years. I've heard you quoted a thousand times. You deal in theory, I deal in fact. I can't believe that such men as 
Dubois, Wagner, Hale, Bishop could be completely wrong. One of them, yes. But four distinguished scientists, each at a different time, different place, have seen the same evidence. Well, tomorrow I shall see for myself. Any plans as to where we can start? I suggest that ridge that runs north and south. I've tried to take other parties over there, but they didn't like the climb. You lead. I'll follow. Well, see you tomorrow, then. Good night, Doctor. Good night. Dr. Zombo! Dr. Zombo! Do you think I'll live to be 100 years old? Oh, well, do you smoke or drink? Nope, I've never done either. Oh, then, do you gamble, drive fast cars, or fool around with women? Nope, I've never done any of those things. Well, then, why do you want to live to be a hundred? <coughs> And we'll be right back to our very scary movie right after these important messages from our sponsors. <laughs> Guess who's on the web? Check out the Zombo website at zombo.com. <laughs> Now there's some interesting cleavage. for us to split up here. The doctor and I will take this side. You three follow that ridge as far as you can. If you see anything, fire a shot. We'll do the same. Good luck, Miss Hayward. If you do fire a shot, Mr. Cameron, make sure you're in the clear. It could cause a slide. Good luck. There's something about that guy. I've been wanting to say that ever since I met him. He's tried to be helpful. What more could he do? I don't know, Connie, but... Come on, this isn't finding Jim. Let's go.
better get back. Connie, I hate to quit. But this seems hopeless. Steve, I told you that it's urgent that I find Jim. But I didn't explain why. He took some experimental injections back in the States. After he left, the doctor told me that if he didn't return from this high altitude at once, he would die. Didn't he know that? No, it's a continuous experiment. This altitude factor was revealed only after Jim had already left. Connie. Connie, we've got to go back and organize a regular rescue party or we'll never get to Jim. And what's that supposed to mean? It means that I don't trust Varga. I know what you're thinking. But I'm afraid. Maybe I am. But you yourself said that at least one person has been lost in every expedition he has led. And how do you account for the two guides disappearing? I've wondered about that myself. You'll notice Varga hasn't mentioned them. You're jumpy, Hud. All day I've had the feeling someone was watching us. Trailing us. We'll take the same route back. If somebody's watching us, maybe we'll see them. Come on. you can see every locale where the Yeti are supposed to have been seen. That peak was where Dubois first found tracks. Over there, Wagner photographed what he claims are Yeti tracks. And right down there is the spot where Bishop claims he first saw a Yeti last year. Weren't you with Bishop? I led the trip. I wasn't with him at the time. Bishop was a friend of mine for 20 years. I don't think he makes such a statement without some good reason. By the way, how was he killed? We never knew. A few days later, he disappeared, much as Jim has. We searched for days. We lost a great man. I lost a great friend. Did you ever check his discovery spot for tracks? What do you know about his discovery spot? We didn't have much chance. There was four feet of snow that night. Can we pass that spot on the way? If we hurry. I don't want to keep the others waiting. Miss Hayward is concerned enough as it is. I want you to know, Varga, I appreciate your concern for Miss Hayward. I envy Steve. They'll make a fine couple. Steve? I thought it was hot. Not as observing as I am, Doctor. Take it easy, Connie. Here they come now. Dr. Erickson, did you find any trace of Jim? No, Connie. I'm afraid we didn't. I'm sorry. Neither did we. Where's Hud? Hud? He left us on the climb back to join you. We didn't see him. Something must have happened. We better get out there right away and look for him. I'll break out the flares. It might be dark before we find him. I was climbing over an outcropping on my way to join you, Doctor. And I saw some tracks in the snow. Tracks? I followed them for quite a while till they led me to a large fault in the glacier. I decided not to go any further alone. This is what I've been searching for. Can you lead us back there, Hutt? Now? Yes. It'll soon be dark. That's all right. We brought flares. Let's get started. Thirty years I've waited for this.
Salami! What are you doing? Oh, I'm trying on my new Zombo t-shirt. Do you like it? Oh, well, you look positively morbid. Now you too can have your very own Zombo scary t-shirt. They come in all sizes from small through 4X. Just go to the Zombo website at zombo.com. Click on buy stuff and order your very own Zombo Scary T-shirt today. Credit card orders only. Please allow three weeks for delivery. Well, how do you like it? Well, you're putting up a good front. Well, why do you think they call it a T-shirt? Erickson won't leave. He's so steamed up about his discovery, he's floating. Then we'll go alone. We can't desert him. Barker will stay with him. <sighs> That's what I'm afraid of. You know, I, I'm beginning to think HUD was right about a lot of things. Poor HUD. Oh, oh. We'd only listen to him. His head. You're lucky to be alive after last night. I live to be a thousand. I'll never forget it. Uh, I know what you mean. I'm going over to see Doc. Talk to him about Varga. Is Varga there now? I don't know, but if he is, I'll try to pin him down. Don't ever let him think you suspect him. Look, Connie. I'm only concerned about one thing. Getting us out of this place alive. I'll be real cozy with Varga. Come on. I've got to talk to you, Doc. Therefore, I drew the... Doc, snap out of it. That... Leave me alone. Don't interrupt me. Listen, Doc, what I got to tell you concerns that. Steve, don't interrupt me. I'll be hours getting down what I saw last night. I... You want to get that back to the States? Don't ask me such questions. Of course I do. Then put it down and listen to me. Thanks. And listen closely. And none of us will get out of here alive. What? Where's Varga? Out there somewhere? Watch the flap. If he comes, let me know. What's the matter, Steve? You act as if you'd lost your mind. I almost lost my life last night. I don't want to go the way Hud did. And Jim. 
You've learned something about Jim? I learned our chances to get out aren't worth a nickel. Varga says they'll never attack. They're frightened of guns. You saw the way they panicked? Doc, did you see where that club came from? I didn't even know you were hit till Varga picked you up. I know there were no Yeti on that side of me. But Varga was. Varga? Why, he saved your life. And for what reason, I haven't figured. You should thank God we have Varga. He got us out of there at the risk of his own life. You, you should have seen the way he intimidated them. Literally chased them. Doc. He's coming. Not a word about this. I'm going to play this straight, and you play along. You're looking much better, Mr. Cameron. Doc tells me I owe you my life. I don't know how much it's worth, but I'll try to get even someday. It was nothing. I'm sure you would have done the same if our positions had been reversed. How are you, Miss Hayward? I trust no ill effects from that harrowing experience. Heroin experience? Is that what it was? I thought you actually saw a Yeti. I wouldn't like to go through it again. How many do you figure there were last night? I counted three, but there could have been twice that. How do you account for the fact that they've never been seen before in numbers? That's because they only made one costume. Well, Doctor, it seems Miss Hayward and Mr. Cameron don't share our enthusiasm. So I suppose we'd better start making plans for the trip back. But before we go, would you like to visit the cave? I'd like to spend a whole day there. I have a dozen questions I'd like answered. Whenever you're ready. Mind if I go, Varga? Of course not. The more the merrier. I'd like a day to get over this head. It's the biggest hangover I ever had. Let's make it tomorrow, then. Tomorrow it is. Good. I can take a day to finish up my notes. <clears throat> I'll be back in a moment. I'm going to take another look outside. Keep a lookout. Doc, listen to me. You're not beginning all over again. Doc, this man is a phony. Who or what he is, I don't know. But he's playing us two ways from the middle. How can you talk such nonsense? What are you implying? Because he knew about that cave. Steve, I'm becoming a little impatient with you. Varga saved your life. You should be grateful for that, at least. I want no more of your fanciful illusions. Now, if you don't mind, I'll get back to my work. OK, Doc. Have it your way. I didn't know this was Burger King. Steve, what's the matter with him? Why won't he listen? I'm beginning to think there's something wrong with all of us for coming up here. Are you really going back to that cave? You bet I am. But this time, I'll go prepared. But what about me? Come along. Steve, I couldn't. I just couldn't go in that cave again. I can't let Erickson go alone. I'm beginning to think Vargas trying to pick us off one at a time. First, it was Jim, then Hunt. He figures to get Erickson alone, then he'll come back for us. Steve, let's get out of here. Let's go right now. Please, Steve, please, let's go. Honey, we'd never make it down off that mountain alone. I don't know what Vargas up to, but I'm going to find out. But I can't stay here alone. I can't. You're not going to stay here in the tent. That would make it too easy for her. I think I could talk some sense into Erickson when we're inside the cave. Now, remember the last place we stopped to rest just before we got here? That's where you're going as soon as I pull out with Doc and Varga. Stay there until I come. But supposing you don't? I'll come back for you. Now, take all the food you can carry. Steve, if he comes first, I'll jump. Why can't you just fake it or scream like everyone else? Steve! Oh, Steve! Coming, Doc! Try this. See if it's too heavy. 
I can handle it. Right. Hide it. As soon as we're out of sight, start back down. Honey, don't lose it. We don't need all the way down. I'll see what Doc wants. <laughs> oh, good morning, C. Morning, Varga. How are things up in the hill? I kept watch all night. Out of sight of them. Yeah, I guess we've seen the last of them. Oh, uh, Doc's been up all night with his notes. Maybe he'd like a rest before we start. Speak for yourself, Steve. I'll be right with you. Is Miss Hayworth coming with us? I actually wanted to, but I talked her out of it. <laughs> I'm glad. She's had enough trouble as it is. By the way, I did find this. Thanks. I just hope I don't have to use it. I'll be ready. How you do it, Varga? These climbs never seem to bother you. I've spent most of my life climbing. It comes as naturally to me as sitting at a desk does to you. It seems unreasonable to be warm in temperature like this. I can remember really being warm in Calcutta. That heat was just too much for me. What does a Himalayan guide do in Calcutta? Good question. My father was stationed there, so I started my early schooling. But it didn't work out. So he shipped me to Sweden, where the temperature was more to my liking. Didn't the heat affect your father? Not as it did me. Apparently, I take after my mother. She was a mountain woman with Mongol blood. She showed him how to put on eyeliner. Are you married, Varga? Never had the time for it. Too bad. Good blood strain like yours should be perpetuated. It makes for strong men, and women, too. Well, the right woman will come along. I'll name my first son Eric. Eric Varga. Sounds good, doesn't it? I'll hold you to that promise. Shall we move on? That was the light snow we had last night. Could move easily. We'd better spread out, just in case. <sighs> could live underneath that avalanche. I'm going to take a look. You're coming with me. Barker, you'll do as I order. This is my expedition. Was your expedition, Doctor. You'll take orders from me now. Barker, you're forgetting your position. 
Don't ever talk to me like that again. Don't even think it. I'll start up that hill. You're mad, Varga. You'll soon see how mad. Now start up that hill. You're thinking of escape, Doctor. I wouldn't. Sit down, Doctor. Our civilization hasn't quite caught up with yours. Right there. Was that the pronoun our you used? It was. Your part, Yeti. Steve was right. He suspected this. He'll suspect no more. That avalanche was time to take care of him. I'll kill anyone who insists on these expeditions. Or if I don't, my people will. Most of them are not developed intellectually, it's true. They frighten at the sound of a shot. But they'll get over that. But the only reason they wouldn't kill one of you on sight would be because I told them not to. You're mad. No, Doctor. Every move I've made, I've planned meticulously. I can make you the most famous man alive. <laughs> Put me on exhibition. No, thank you, Doctor. I have other plans for me and for you. What possible plans could you have for me? I plan to kill you. Kill me? What good will that do? You've kept this secret for centuries. No man has ever seen us and lived. No man will until we are ready. Knowing what it would mean to you to find this out about us before you died, I thought I'd give you this pleasure. You see, we are quite human after all. Let me help you, Varga. I'm not ready for your kind of help. It's obvious to me what your plan is. To breed out the Yeti strain. But how can you do it without help? I being the fifth generation, you can see that it's not too difficult to obtain the necessary females. You kidnap women? There have been five this year. Now, of course, there's... Connie. With her, I should be able to hedge hop two generations. Our offspring should be most interesting. Don't you think so, Doctor? Come, come, Doctor. A short while ago, you were recommending marriage for me. Have you changed your mind so quickly? I recommended marriage, not what you have in mind. I had great respect for you a short time ago, Varga. Because I thought you were a man apart. I was mistaken. You're a devil, Varga. A devil incarnate. Doctor, you disappoint me. I thought we could discuss this dispassionately, clinically. After all, it's your own field. Where man came from, where he's going. I'd hope to get some suggestions from you on how we could develop our intellectual side. You have nothing to offer? Too bad. We'll part sooner than I'd expected. You don't frighten me, Varga. 
My life has been full. Well said, Doctor. I do this with regret, for I have enjoyed your visit. We speak the same language in many respects. Goodbye, Doctor. Perhaps we'll meet again in some other incarnation. has been seriously hurt. He wants to see you right away. Where's Steve? We were caught in a slide. I saved the doctor, but I'm afraid No, that... no! Oh. Edward, you don't have to be afraid. I'm here to help you. Steve! Oh. Steve! Steve! to marry this wimp? Let's talk down while we have the chance. Steve Barker killed Jim and Dr. Erickson. He told me when I wouldn't go with him. I gave commands to the Yeti. I saw it. I know it all figures. Come on, we can talk later. <laughs> Thank you. 
away from here, Steve. Take me away. Now, don't forget, boys and ghouls and mummies and daddies, tune in next week for another very scary movie on Zombo's House of Horror Movies. <laughs>